Question number three. Look at this number. Write the digit that's in the hundreds place and write the digit that's in the hundredths place. Well, the first thing to do that I'm going to do is actually write the number out a bit bigger and put some column headings on. So I'm going to give myself some space. Let's space it out nicely so we've got room to put the column headings on. Because if you try and squeeze them on as it's written there, you might confuse yourself. So obviously there's the decimal point and the first number before the decimal point is units then tens then hundreds after hundreds becomes thousands and after thousands becomes tens of thousands which is tth after the decimal point that's when you've got your tenths and the second digit after that that's when you've got your hundreds if you did go to more decimal places then you would have thousands if you continue this way, you then have hundreds of thousands, and then after hundreds of thousands, it's millions. Okay, but we've got all the correct column headings in place there. So the question now should be very, very simple. So the digit that's in the hundreds place, it just literally wants the digit, so a single digit. So hundreds, the hundreds digit is this one here. So that's the four. So in our answer box, we need to write the four. And the digit that is in the hundredths place, well, there's hundredths, so that one is going to be the six. The two answers are four in the hundredths place and six in the hundredths place. If it did actually ask you the value of the, that digit, which sometimes SAT questions do, now that changes things because the value of this four, because it's in the hundredth column, you would have to write four hundred. That's not the actual answer here, because it's only asking for the digit. So what we're saying is, if it asks you for the value of that 4, it would be worth 400. And the value of the 6, if it did ask you to do that, well, 6 in the hundredths column is basically a 6 there, and you would have to put, replace the zeros back up to the unit. So it would be 0 0.06. You would need a zero in the tenths column, you would need a decimal point, and you would need a zero in the unit column. You don't have to put zeros in for everything else. Because if you've got zero in the units column, we know that it would be 0 0.06. So the value of the 6 is 0 0.06, which is another way of saying 600.